Tonight in Iowa, almost the entire Republican presidential field will take the stage at a GOP dinner to make their pitch for why Iowans should caucus for them in January. At the center of attention, of course, is Donald Trump. It's his first campaign event since the news broke that he's facing more federal charges. CNN's Jessica Dean is in Des Moines, Iowa. Jessica, how's it looking out there? Well, it's going to be quite a night. We're really seeing all of Trump's legal issues colliding right into this 2024 presidential primary, as we've seen time and time again in the last several months. And, you know, we looked at some of the polling that we got from Fox Business over the weekend, and it just shows Donald Trump's incredible hold over this race in the state of Iowa. Now, it is early. Things change. There is certainly Trump fatigue based on the voters I've been talking to. But... One word that did not come up yesterday, either from Ron DeSantis, who I was with on his bus tour, which I'll get to in just a second, or from the voters I was talking to, was indictment. Nobody was really talking about that. They were talking about who can win in 2024 against Joe Biden. That's the calculation that the voters I was speaking to are making, and they're trying to ascertain who that person is. Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis in the middle of kind of a campaign reset a couple of months into his campaign. We've seen him shedding about a third of his staff. Uh, They're pr uh, promising a leaner and more insurgent campaign. And I asked him about that yesterday, Dana. He told me that uh, sometimes, you know, you have to make new decisions. You have to have this kind of commander's uh, intent. And if they're not following uh, what needs to be done, then you have to make changes and that he's all about substance. And that's what he's going to focus on. What he's not doing is directly talking about Donald Trump on the stump. And aside from Asa Hutchinson and Chris Christie, as you well know, we really aren't hearing any of these candidates directly take on Trump. They're really trying to thread this needle with voters that likely voted for Trump in the last two elections and convince them that they're the person to do it. What we're hearing from DeSantis is this electability argument. He keeps coming back to what he's done in Florida. Yesterday, he said he, he won by 20 there. Trump won by three, that he was able to get independents to come to his side, making the case that that's what he could do in a broader election. Dana, whether or not voters are absorbing that and going to side with that, we'll see. But it is going to be interesting to see them all on that stage tonight and then Trump whirring into town. And really, will he suck that oxygen out as he, as he often does? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for that reporting, Jess. Appreciate it. Let's just, as we talk about this, bring back up that poll that came out uh, on Sunday, I believe, in Iowa, because it really is striking when you look at those numbers. David Chalian, 46 percent, which is an increase if you look at sort of, there haven't been that many Iowa polls, but generally speaking, uh, in the way that people feel about uh, the former president. But what's also maybe the most striking is how DeSantis goes down and everybody else. They're just so far behind him. So far behind. <clears throat> and listening to Jessica, she's sort of standing in the center of these two separate universes that are taking place in this Republican nomination race right now. Because <clears throat> we all get press releases every day. It's like, how many doors the Never Back Down, the DeSantis Super PAC has knocked on? And mm -hmm. how many phone calls have been made? And they're opening up offices. And it's like, there's this attempt uh, of a traditional campaign that's happening. And that's what you're going to see with these 10 minute speeches tonight at an Iowa Republican gathering yeah. with the faithful. And it's this like bizarre, bizarro universe of a, of a normal campaign season. And then you have this force of Donald Trump who's facing all of this legal peril, who, you know, the legal peril based on perhaps upending our democracy and trying to thwart it, right? And and yet he's still 30 points out in that poll, and he's such the dominant force that he comes in on a day like this where the indictment is all the news. And do those other speeches matter? Yes, to the half of the Republican uh, caucus going electorate that is open to an alternative, they matter. But, it, but it's not to the full swath. A lot of folks are locked into Donald Trump already. And listen, they liked him from 2016 as well, right? He barely lost you know, Iowa. There's so much chatter about, oh, well, maybe he's not uh, the favorite of evangelical voters. But then he can say, look what I did uh, around abortion. Look what I did around the Supreme Court. The other thing that's interesting about that poll, too, is Tim Scott. Yeah. Right. You hear so you much up. buzz about Tim Scott, him possibly getting a second look, particularly in a place like Iowa. Uh, he is a man of real deep faith and he can speak the Bible and he can speak Jesus. Uh, I know you're a preacher's kid. And so, you know, all of this. I'm a preacher's kid, too. Uh, so I expect, you know, there could be some sort of Tim Scott boomlet yeah. uh, at some point, And this might be the beginning. I I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to play something that Tim Scott said yesterday in Iowa. Uh, it was specifically about what we saw in Florida mm -hmm. uh, last week, where the um, 
they changed the, uh, the, the education standards, just questioning whether or not slaves got skills, usable skills, uh, when they were uh, slaves. Tim Scott pushed back on that mm -hmm. in a big way. There's no silver lining in freedom, in slavery. The truth is that anything you can learn, that any benefits that people suggest you had during slavery, you would have had as a free person. I would hope that every person... in our country and certainly running for president would appreciate that and listen people have bad days sometimes they regret what they say and we should uh, ask them again to clarify their positions <laughs> so gracious yeah 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 i mean this is him see this was teed up for him and this is tim scott really taking advantage of an opening uh that ron DeSantis has left for him we see donors giving him another look we see those evangelical voters in iowa giving him another look and it fits with his campaign message he's trying to tell a different story about the republican party and you saw even represented by To, to kind of rally around Trump's side here. But let's be kind of honest, for this, for this primary to even be competitive at all, someone needs to grow in Iowa. I mean, if Donald Trump is winning Iowa by 46%, this primary hasn't started yet, right? Yeah. And so I'm saying there is a baseline that even the Tim Scott still have not cleared That's yet right. that I think we have to re-remind ourselves, even though he's kind of taking up some of that energy that was being coordinated around Ron DeSantis, that wasn't enough to, sur right. you, yeah. to surpass Donald Trump. Ron they have to add, they need addition yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, to add up all things to coalesce rather than only 1% here, 2% here. That's right. Ron DeSantis is trying. Uh, there was a clip that I think probably it's fair to say went sort of viral yeah. right. yesterday. In our world. Yeah. In our world, which is the world that matters on Inside Politics. Uh, Ron DeSantis on the campaign trail was on that bus tour that Jessica was talking about interacting with a child about an icy. Yeah, it's good to meet you too. Oh, what is that? An icy? Yeah, that's probably a lot of sugar, huh? Good to see you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's more awkward, the sort of good to see you part to a child or the, you know, comments about the calorie count of an icy. You know, the problem that Ron DeSantis has, and we've been talking about it endlessly, he doesn't have a lot of charisma. Uh, he's very awkward on the trail. And sometimes he comes across as a humorless robot. And in a place like Iowa, in a place like New Hampshire, where you're going to be greeting mm -hmm. all sorts of people, from kids with ICs to grandmas with ICs, uh, he's got some work to do. Listen, I think the average small-town mayor is probably better at sort of the nitty-gritty of politics than Ron DeSantis is, and we're see sort of seeing that over and over in clips like this. Mm -hmm. I mean... No one has more pressure on themselves to be normal at the Iowa State <laughs> Fair than Ron DeSantis currently has. And so with that fishbowl, uh, that, the, all those qualities, uh, that lack is really going to be on display. That is a very gracious And eating answer. a corn dog on camera. Oh, That's yeah. not yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not. All right. Well, that'll be next month. Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.